Hey everybody, you're tuned in to an, another uh, free map podcast. Didn't have a libertarian type article, I usually handle some of those on my website. Obviously I'll put a link down below. I um, have been working on getting new tags. Uh, it, it usually I'll say reblog, it's usually libertarian-esque adjacent articles about various things uh i did want to tell you that i did have an idea for a uh, video today and it was another defending the undefendable this time it was a much maligned hollywood actor this man's name is james franco you might remember james franco from awesome movies like pineapple express he played Saul Belogus. Uh, he was also in uh, Spider-Man, and I, I wish, um, I don't think I need to keep talking about Freaks and Geeks, but this came up, I, I read these articles, and one of the ironies about the whole James Franco debacle is, it's something kind of stuck with me. He's lost a friend. He's lost multiple friends over this. I think the Hollyweird people basically said, we're done with you, and they're washing. They're basically just walling him off and watching him die. Um, one of his friends, Seth Rogen, because of money, basically just sold him out and won't have anything to do with him. Either that or he's drying him out. A lot of people understand what drying out is. You let this blow over over a couple of years, and you go back to being friends again after a couple of years. Uh, people do that, but if you ask me, selling somebody out for money is a bad idea. It's That's Judas stuff. And anyway, how I'm going to defend him. A lot of people, one of the... Was the execute the pardon me the executions the uh, accusations of some of the stuff that um when it came to his acting school I mean they mentioned about like acting school being. Uh, these lessons and stuff that, I mean, it's kind of hilarious about the acting school saying he was being a creep and what have you and making people do simulated sex and stuff like that. Um, here's the thing. I, I know that people are saying, oh, he was in a position of power and he was co coercing somebody. I think that these were adults, and they could say no. They could walk out the door, and you could just say no. That's it. Walk out the door. You're grown-ups, and you're, or you're blaming a victim. Well, I've walked out of bad situations, and I've told people to shove it, and said I didn't want something, and I decided not to do it. And don't know, if, you know, that's... Okay, that's like, I mean, I mean, I mean, look at other things that, oh Lord, here's the thing, they, they mention about like, uh, seeing a DM to an underage girl, um, and I guess people joked about some of this stuff, he, I honestly don't think that it, it uh, was exactly him trying to get a, a hotel room with this chick. It might have been one time trying to be nice and get people. Uh, it one, I mean, we overlook things say, oh, it's creepy. He might have been creepy before, but he wasn't breaking laws. And I don't make a habit of this. I drew a... I draw a hard line at things and I tell folks blatantly, I draw a hard line. Other people don't. 
they tiptoe and they toy. If you want to say it, anything, it was off. It was completely off key to text underage girls. It's like somebody who's 17. In most states, it's legal. So, yeah, I hate saying that. The a lot of states, it's it's just frowned upon, but it's not illegal. I mean, you were talking about, uh, you know, people that, uh, he was trying to push people into nudity, like uh, women to get nude. He wanted to, he supposedly flashed somebody his junk. Yeah, I mean, if you want to call it misconduct, yes, but a lot of these, it, it, how about this? Where's the police report if he committed a crime? lawsuits sure settlements i'm going to tell you when you have enough money people are going to sue you and you get settlements and just wash it over and yeah i was like the the charlene the charlene me thing okay making choices personal choices um I mean, like, talking about, like, being a bully and cornering people. I mean, okay. It, I mean, yeah. It, being weird and having elements about you, it used to be that we looked at people and we could wash over... Uh, people being yelled at by directors and now we're soft and if anybody needed to grab him and just talk to him about his behavior and now he doesn't have friends he was sold out by seth rogan i'm not saying that he is some angel he's what 41 he's 40 or 41 now and there's a point, uh, God, he was 42. <laughs> I think he's 42. And in your life, you're, you're going to have to come to a point where you have growth. And yeah, he's, he's probably been enabled by money and, and people pat him on the back. But what he really needed was somebody to grab him and say, there's a point where your stupid behavior is going to screw you. Well, he's gotten screwed, but in a, in a man's life, he needs friends. And the one or two people that were his friends are basically acting like he doesn't exist. And you would ask, you're like, was, that's out of the concern of what these people are saying. And here's, I mean, look, the weird part of it is he needs, he needs a confidant. He needs, he needs to get you know, let's say like counseling, but like a person he could lean on and, and, you know, knock heads with and talk. And he doesn't have that. He had enablers and now he, I mean, did he like, did he like matters of the flesh? Yeah. And when you're in a position of power and money, you, you get that way. There's certain part things about you. The same reason you could take, you could take, people from say the sticks and good god living people and give them an ideology and let them run a concentration camp and he was a little guy who got moved into this and he understands power he loves he probably loves sex with women he he likes matters of the flesh i'm not defending bad behavior but Maybe I should defend James Franco as a man in a state of, of, of development. And he was not, he didn't have anybody behind him who was healthy that was pushing him into, in, into the, the proper stage, the rest of his life, manhood, not manhood as in like having your balls drop. I meant like manhood as in growing up. And that's something I wish people would think about. A lot of these little penny any things he's been accused of, it's it's nothing. I know nobody wants to say that, but he 
he's just a different kind of cat. And you know what? I encourage people to work with James Franco again. It okay. I was like, make uh, make a. I I thought it was funny. I think he was had the ability to be creative, and being a fair weather friend doesn't help. And as a person who's had friends disappear in life, and people who would bullshit me in front of my face, I'll tell you up front, their a fair weather friends aren't useful. And I know how it feels to be on the ropes, being different, just being on, being different, and having people smile in your face and. And do that little chintzy look there. And the irony is, we all got to get on with our life. But I'm not going to dime that dude out. I might want to encourage you guys to not do to, that to people you call friends. Especially after there's no criminal reports. There's one lawsuit that was settled, which happens in Holly Weird. But think that way, guys. Just start thinking that way. Defend the undefendable, a man, a man on the edge. And I always tell people a man on the edge is a man closer to the edge of darkness. And the darker you go, the worse it can get. All right. Don't dime out your friends. That's basically what happened. Now, please have a good week.